out from Election Day. Experts tell us that COVID-19 could remain a health threat for at least the next 18 months. And now there's new calls to conduct the 2020 elections by mail. But Democrats and Republicans differ on whether or not this is a good idea. One Democrat, Oregon Senator Ron Wyden, who's been a longtime advocate for expanding mail-in voting, says his state used mail by mail voting since he got elected in 1996. And those who say it can't work are lying. He's calling on Congress to act because time is running out to prepare for November's elections. And while congressional Democrats propose funding policies that include requiring states to provide prepaid postage on mail-in ballots, congressional Republicans describe it as the federalization of the election process. Well, mail-in ballots can present many challenges, especially as it relates to voter fraud. Here to help us explain all this, we bring in founder and CEO of Signal, Brent Buchanan, and political director of the Republican State Leadership Committee, Edith George. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. All right, Brent. Thank you for having me. Brent, on its face, this sounds really good, right? Hey, I get to sit at home. You send me a ballot. I don't have to do anything. It's postage page, and it comes back. Tell me why that's maybe not the best idea. It's a good idea for states that have the infrastructure in place. And we can look at Wisconsin <clears throat> as an example where if you don't have the infrastructure in place, it can cause significant problems. They found baskets and baskets of ballots in Wisconsin after the election that was just held earlier this month. And then we're relying on the U.S. Postal Service to handle the ballots both ways. And we all know where they stand with most voters. Edith, you know, a lot of people are saying, why can't we just do both? Obviously, some states have already done that, but why can't some states allow the voter to have the, the choice? Absolutely. Um, listen, I don't think anyone is arguing against absentee voting. We know many states already have this practice in place. It's part of their constitution. What we're saying is we can't allow laws to be changed on the fly without proper procedure and protocol, because that's when you start having bags of ballots left on the side, not getting counted. And that's really when you start to lose the integrity of elections all around. I think that that's one thing that's not talked about here. If you're if they're just mailing it out to everyone and it's sitting in mailboxes, a you know, people if they're not even requesting the ballot, you're just shipping them out. They're sitting in people's mailboxes and you have no idea about the chain of custody, whether or not who opens that mail, whether or not the voter actually wanted the ballot and who's sending it back. Brent, one of the terms that keeps coming up is ballot harvesting. What is ballot harvesting? So a ballot harvester is somebody who's hired to go to the house of the absentee or mail voter and get their ballot response. And in most states, uh, this person can also be the individual who registered that person. So who's to say we work so hard to get these voter ID laws in place? Who's to say that that person who registered was actually the person who voted if you have these harvesters standing in between the process? That's actually a good point, right? But I think the other thing that's really interesting is what if I said, hey, everybody that works at Newsmax, tomorrow, bring in your ballot. We're all going to fill them out together and then I'll take them down to the, to, and drop them off to, to the town hall. Don't you think that's a bit of a problem? I mean, now by doing this, instead of like allowing each person to request it, not necessarily knowing if they were voting in person or mail, you now can harvest all of those by telling everyone, hey, we're all going to vote together. Or by the way, you don't want to vote. Just bring your envelope in. We'll take care of it. I think that's a major concern. Don't you? It's a significant concern. And in a lot of states, they don't validate the signature. So you can literally just put an X on your ballot and they'll take that as your signature. That's crazy. All right. Well, you both work for Republican organizations. And my question to both of you is, it almost seems like this might be inevitable during this pandemic. So why can't Republicans just say, all right, we need to step it up and start preparing our voters to understand this. There's already dim super PACs who are out there with ads and battleground states teaching people how to vote by mail. So isn't it time that Republicans decide, hey, maybe we should start stepping it up and teaching our own voters? Edith? Absolutely. And, and I'll jump in on that one. You know, I think I think a good example of things being done correctly with bipartisan support is Louisiana. Uh, you have a Democratic governor. You have a Republican secretary of state. They have both agreed on the terms and conditions to allow for absentee voting um, in their upcoming election. And so, again, it goes back to this understanding of absentee voting laws already exist in all 50 states. It's how do we alter them to the very specific situation that we're in, which is what Louisiana has done. So Louisiana is allowing 
for absentee voting, but it's very specific to COVID-19 cases, whether you have been diagnosed with COVID-19, whether a family member has been diagnosed, whether in the last two weeks you've been recovering. So it's not this kind of free for all. Anyone who wants is either going to get a ballot or is going to get a request. There's a specific guideline that needs to be followed. Um, and similarly, they've also extended early voting for a total of 13 days now. Um, again, bipartisan solutions. It's folks coming to the table, thinking through what is causing the problem and how do we fix that specific problem. But Brent, don't you think that we should maybe start educating voters on actually how to do it so that they're prepared and when this time does come that they're ready? I think mail-in ballots and absentee ballots are a great way for individuals to participate in our democracy. The challenge is how the process is handled. Just like Edith said, uh, these states that have it in place, it can work, but the states that don't, these county registrars could be overrun. I mean, you look at Florida as an example. Uh, Republicans have used mail-in and early voting there to really increase their hold uh, in winning elections. So it, it's not a matter of uh, mail-in voting is bad for Republicans or good for Democrats. It's a fact about our uh, election integrity. I mean, are we are we willing to trade ballot security and election integrity for convenience? Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, this is this is the the nut of this is that what are we doing? We're shifting to a mail-in system, and I think without doing it right, without ensuring the integrity of the thing, we're undermining the very fabric of our democracy. It's, it's not that it's, it can't happen, it's how it happens, and I think that's absolutely right. We're rushing to get it done. Thank you guys for educating us all about what's happening. Really appreciate it and look forward to having you back. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Sean. You bet. All right, there is a lot more to discuss and break down from what we've heard today. Spice & Company, we'll be right back.